Hello, my yogi friends. I am here with another Hatha yoga flow for you today. We are gonna start laying on our backs like usual. So let's find a nice comfortable spot right away. Laying back on our mats. Letting our back bodies relax. And as we start our practice here, if you like to start with a, a blanket or um, with an extra layer, feel free to keep all of that on before we really get warmed up here. So we'll just start by tucking our shoulder blades underneath us, closing our eyes, taking this time to really find our, our breath. What's our quality of breath today? Maybe our breath is shallow or just warming up here, trying to warm our muscles from the inside. So it's just starting to deepen our breath, bringing our breath in through our nose and out through our nose. And then maybe each breath, we take just a little bit more air in and let that air out just a little bit slower. A few breaths like that. Focusing our attention on our breath and letting thoughts just kind of pass by. Not really sticking ourselves onto one thought in particular. And maybe we start to let our mind gravitate towards something positive. Whatever that positive force is in our life, we find it here. And maybe it's just the positivity of coming to our mats and taking this time for ourselves. And we use that to power us through our practice, give us even more energy as we move through these poses and then take it with us off the mat and use it out in the real world. All right, so on our next inhale, we're gonna take the arms out and overhead, take a full body stretch. And then draw the knees in toward our chest. Give ourselves a nice squeeze here. Hug the knees in close. And then we'll release just our right leg down along the mat, hugging the left knee in nice and snug. And we'll release that left leg. Right knee comes up and in nice and snug. And then both of our feet flat to the mat. Setting up our bridge pose. Fingertips brushing the back of our heels. Tilt the pelvis, all of our spine hugging into the mat. And then we lift, press up, press through the feet, press through the arms, toes facing the top of the mat, keeping our gaze straight up toward the ceiling here. And then we start to flow, lowering back to the mat, one vertebrae at a time. Inhale as we lift, press, and exhale to lower. <clears throat> okay, we're gonna keep that flow. Just a few rounds here. Waking up the front body as we lift and open the heart. Engaging the back side of our legs as we press down into the floor to lift. One more. And one 
once we've completed that last round, we're going to bring our knees up over our hips. <coughs> Take the hands behind our heads so the elbows are out wide. We're going to find our yogi bicycle. Take our inhale. Exhale, right elbow across towards left knee. Right leg extended straight out long. Inhale back to our center. Exhale as we lift and cross. Now keep that flow going. Really trying to connect our breath and our movements here. That's the purpose of the start of our practice, all finding that connection, breath and movement, so that we can maintain that connection throughout the whole of our practice. Let's do one more on each side. We'll let the head rest, hug our knees in, take a nice cleansing breath in and out. And we'll let our feet come flat to the mat. We're gonna take our hands together into um, a, maybe you call it Charlie's Angels grip here. So our thumbs and fingers, uh, index fingers are pointing out. We're gonna take our legs and uh, extend our legs up towards the ceiling. So maybe we find a flex in the feet so that we're pressing up through the heels and we can definitely have a bend in the knees here if that's kind of awakening something in the backside of the legs that is maybe a little too tight just yet. So find our ourselves centered here, low backs on the mat, take an inhale. And we're gonna take the hands outside the left leg, reaching outside the thigh, getting as much reach as we can, and reaching the outside of the leg. So we're awakening the side body here as we reach through those fingers. Inhale, come back up through center. Exhale to the other side. Inhale, up through center. Exhale and reach. Just a few more like that. If we wanted more out of this move, we could drop the opposite leg. So as we reach towards the left, the right leg might drop towards the mat. A little bit something different there. Inhale, center. Exhale, over to the right. Left leg might drop. Inhale, center. Exhale and reach. That reach might be enough. So we can hold just the reach and just forget about the leg. It's all good. We're moving. One more on each side. Back up through center. We can release the head. Hug those knees back in. Grab the back side of our thighs. Some rock and rolls here. We're going to build up some momentum to rock all the way up. And then we're going to tuck our chin, rock all the way back. Now we can keep the momentum here with the hands behind the legs. If it doesn't feel good, then don't do it. We're just going to meet up in a nice, easy seated position. But this should kind of feel good on the back of the, on the, um, the muscles that support the spine here. And we'll do one more. We're all going to meet up. Tuck our legs, Ooh, come right over into table. Let's meet in table on our hands and knees. Fingers are spread wide. Adjust the knees so they're right underneath the hips. Tops of our feet to the mat. And maybe we take a peek between our legs and notice if our toes turn in or if they turn out. Try to get our calves to kind of be parallel to each other. Crown of the head towards the top of the mat, moving right into cat and cow. We're going to stretch out, inhale, drop the belly, lift the tailbone, lift the chest, lift the head. Exhale for cat, curl the tailbone under, look towards the belly button, drop the head, press into the palms. Inhale, cow. 
exhale cat. And I want you to take that flow at your own pace, maybe finding a different kind of movement that feels good in your own body. So if you kind of want to drop the heels, I mean the bottom back toward the heels and make it kind of like a circular motion, go for it. One more round of cat and cow. And we're back to our table, moving right along into our spinal balance. We're gonna take right arm forward and left leg. Kick, kick the toes back and then lift that leg so that the leg is just a natural extension of the hip. We don't wanna lift it too high so that our low back stays nice and happy, drawing those low ribs in. A different kind of flow here. So we're gonna bend the arm so that we have a goal post arm. Keep the elbow lifted right at shoulder height here. Now we're gonna take the left leg and we're gonna bend the knee so that we're lifting the knee to hip height. So we're kind of creating the same shape with our leg as we are with the arm. Now inhale and straighten it out. Exhale and bend. So that knee comes out to the side. Inhale and extend. Exhale. Inhale. We're going to take one more. And straighten out. Take it back to table. Now we're going to try the other side. So if at any point we feel like we want to keep both hands on the mat, absolutely keep both hands and we can just do the leg. So extend that left arm, right toes kick back, and then we lift just maybe to our hip height. Notice if the hip wants to open, square it down. Use that centering to hold us steady. Take some time to find this shape here and then we'll Take it to the other side. So bend that left elbow so that the elbow and shoulder come in line. Almost like we've got that goal post arm. Now watch it. Right knee comes out to the side. Try to keep that knee lifted as high as we can. It doesn't not have to be level with the hip. And then extend it all back out. Exhale. Bend. Inhale and reach. So like we're trying to create the same shape with the arm and the leg, inviting it out to the side. Shaking is totally normal and a little shaky here on this last one. Extend it out and lower back. Let's take a little child's pose, shall we? Open the knees. Press the bottom back toward the heels. Let our forehead rest on the mat. Soften the chest, relax the shoulders. And know that we can come here to our child's pose anytime during our practice when we need that break. We're gonna come right here. No judgment. No expectations for ourselves, no competition. Now let's help our knees together underneath us. And we're gonna keep the arms extended out in front. Find that reach, setting up our half series. So palms may be as wide as our mat. Pull forward, kneeling plank. We can find adjustments here. We want to be on an incline, so the knees are behind the hips. We get our shoulders relaxed back and down, keeping the elbows hugging in towards the ribs, lower just halfway down. Inhale as we press back up. Exhale, press back towards the heels. Three more rounds with the breath. Inhale forward. Exhale as we lower just halfway. Inhale and press up, exhale it back. 
Two more rounds, keep that flow. Your own breath here, your own pace. Trying to keep it a slow motion flow. Sometimes slowing down makes that muscle work just that much harder to pause and then press. All right, we're gonna hold here. Curl our toes and make this downward facing dog. Lift the hips, send them high. Paddle out the feet here if it feels good. One heel towards the mat and then the other. Really lengthening out the back side of our legs. Make sure our head and neck is nice and relaxed, no effort there. Inviting the chest back toward the thigh, strong arms. And then from here, we'll lift our right leg, anchor through that left heel, right leg lifts high. If it feels good, bend the knee, open up the hip, toes drip behind, like we're shining that right kneecap toward the ceiling. Squaring the hips. We're gonna take this to fallen star or gate pose. So here's the choice here. Right knee comes underneath us. We hinge forward like plank style arms. Right knee can either drop right down to the mat so we set up gate pose or we can take this right foot, shoot it out to the left side so that we're on the side of our foot. Left hand is gonna to reach towards the sky as we open out to the side. So like a side plank with that bottom leg kicked out, or we're down on the knee and we're in gate pose. Either way, check out our wrist and shoulder, protect the joints there, keep them stacked. And then left hand's gonna come back to the mat and we're gonna take it back to down dog. Now from here, we're gonna take it to the other side. Anchor through that right heel, left leg lifts high. We can pause here, we can open the hip, bend the knees and the toes to drip behind. Squaring the hips, back to that gate pose or fallen star. Left knee draws underneath us, we hinge forward, plank style arms. Drop that knee to the mat, or we shoot this left foot out to the right. So on the side of our foot here, right hand's gonna reach high. So we turn so that we're on the sides of our feet. We're stacking our joints. We can be here on the knee. Holding here, breathing. Maybe the gaze goes up towards the fingers, reaching. And then that right hand comes down. Unwind ourselves, step it back to down dog. Breathe here, one long breath, soften both heels towards the mat, even if we have to put a generous bend in the knees. And then take a slow walk to meet our hands at the top of our mat. A little rag doll here as we drip forward over the legs. We can put a generous bend in the knees. Maybe our chest rests on the thighs. Maybe our hands hook opposite elbows. Let the head and neck go, dumping out any junk we're holding on to. Big or small, let's let go of something that does us no good. Releasing the arms, we'll take ourselves up nice and slow, one vertebrae at a time. Sweep those arms out and overhead. And exhale, heart center. We're gonna stay here at the top of our mats. We're gonna move this into chair. Feet can either be hip distance apart little more stability there with our balance, or we can glue the feet together, step them together, hug the legs together. Hands at heart center, find our chair as we sit back, 
Send the hips back. Bend the knee so that the knees stay behind the toes here. Weight in the heels. Shoulders relax back and down. Think long spine from the crown of our head down through our tailbone. Now from here, we're going to invite the arms to lengthen out in front. So with the arms out in front, I'm going to shimmy back on my mat just a few steps. Now we're going to test the balance. So like I said, feet hip distance apart is going to give us a little more support. So try it either way. If one way doesn't work, then just switch it up, right? Find what feels right. So we're going to shift forward into the toes. Put the weight into the balls of the feet and try to lift the heels. Might just be a baby hover. The higher the lift, the more challenge in the balance. Ooh, shaking is definitely normal here. Engage our center, draw the belly button in, relax the shoulders. Now to start just a little bit of flow here. Keeping the heels lifted if we can, press and lift. Exhale as we lower. Inhale and lift. Exhale and lower. Now we can do whatever we like with the arms. If we don't like the arms, we can ditch them. If it feels better to kind of lift them straight up in front, we can go there. Keep those legs glued together, heels lifted. One more lift. As we lower, drop the heels. Let the hands float by our side, a little mountain. <sighs> and breathe. All right, at the top of our mats, right into our sun salutation. Take that inhale and sweep the arms up. Exhale, forward fold, swan dive it down. Inhale, half back. Exhale and fold. Hands come to the mat, bend the knees. Right foot steps back. And then our left back for down dog. Pull forward into our plank or drop the knees, kneeling plank. Lower all the way to the mat, nice and slow. Elbows stay squeezing close. Inhale, drop the pelvis into the mat, lift the chest. Curl our toes. We'll lift the hips and send it back to down dog. Right foot stepping forward. And then our left meets it for our fold. Inhale the arms all the way back up. Exhale, heart center. We have one more just like that. Inhale, sweep it high. Exhale, forward fold, swan, dive it down. Inhale, half back. Exhale and fold. Hands come to the mat. This time left foot steps back first. And then our right for down dog. Pulling forward into our plank or drop the knees. We can lower all the way to the belly. Elbows hug in. Inhale to scoop the chest up for cobra. And exhale back to downward facing dog. Left foot stepping forward towards the top. And then our right meets it for our forward fold. Inhale all the way back up. Exhale, heart center. Beautiful, we're gonna stay right here. Right foot, step it back. Setting up our warrior. Warrior one, ground through the whole of the back foot. I want that heel down. Toes turning in, hips squaring forward towards the top. Bending into that front knee. Arms are going to reach when we're ready. Relaxing the shoulders, relaxing the jaw. Now send the hands behind us. We'll interlace the fingers. Feel a squeeze of the shoulder blades and then a press down of the knuckles. 
Take our inhale here. Exhale and we'll shift forward, hinge forward. Now it might just be a little hinge here. We might get the belly to lower towards the thigh. Maybe it's the chest, maybe it's the shoulder inside that left thigh. We might get lift out of the arms, but if it doesn't feel good, just keep those knuckles pressing away or let the hands go all together. Really strong through that back foot, release the head if it feels good. Next inhale, come all the way back up. Release the hands. Now take the next inhale and send those arms high. Exhale, warrior two, left arm forward, right arm behind us. Now shift the, the feet so that the back foot, more parallel to the back of the mat, keep bending into that front knee, knee over ankle. So we don't always need a super wide stance here, but we do wanna take up space, reaching through the fingertips. We're gonna flip this front hand over, reach out and then reach up, reverse. A light touch on our back leg. Keep bending into that front knee, feeling that expanse through our rib cage. And then back to warrior two for a side angle. Left forearm crosses, right arm high. We can be here if we're working with a block. We might have a block underneath that left hand and find a little extension there. If, we're, if we do have a block or a water bottle perhaps, this next move is gonna be made a little bit easier. If not, no worries. We're gonna take the hand towards the mat, hop the back foot in. So if the hand doesn't reach the mat, it's all good. We're gonna bend into that front knee so the fingertips can reach the mat. We can be up on those fingertips. So hop the back foot in, put as much bend in this knee as we need to get the fingertips to the mat. You can use, I'm gonna grab one of these board games. <laughs> board game shelf to the rescue. And use it as my block. So whatever you've got, try to find something that we can take outside the left foot, right? So. We want to be out towards the pinky toe, move your block or whatever it is you're using one step away. So we might even be off the mat here so that we can straighten out this left leg and take it to balancing half moon. Lifting that right leg, turning the hips to stack on top of each other, spiraling the heart open to the side. We're gonna kick this foot all the way back. Right hand is gonna come down, fingertips, or if we're using our block or whatever it is we're using, we wanna bring the floor to us, we can be there. Turn on our back foot, so we're in that lunge position and the left hand reaches high, trying to put more weight into the feet than we do into this hand, anchoring us down. And then left hand cartwheels down to the mat. We're going to take this into a walk to the center of our mat. Find a little wide stance here so that the feet are parallel and just a little bit of a fold here. Folding in Feel like we're pressing the back side of our legs behind us. Relax the head and neck as we can walk the fingertips in. Again, we can be up on our block or our board game, if it will. Pressing back up, we're gonna find our lunge. So walk back to the top of our mat. 
Maybe we need to find distance between the feet here so we can be on the ball of our foot and that front knee and ankle are right on top of each other. Options here to stay on the ball of our foot or drop the knee. I'm going to show you on the knee first, but feel free to be on the ball of your foot if you'd like to be there. Sweep the arms all the way up. Relax the shoulders. A little open arm twist here in our lunge. So if it feels unsteady on the ball of the foot, then drop to the knee. Right arm forward, left arm behind. So we're twisting towards our supportive leg. Palms are open, fingers spread. No worries if that left hand doesn't make it all the way back. And we can pause here, or we can take this left hand and drop it to the back of that right thigh. As it anchors there, we're gonna send this right hand to reach up and back. So we're keeping the twist, we're keeping the rotation, but we're adding a little bonus side stretch here, just a bonus, so if it doesn't feel good, let it go. Back to warrior two, unwind back to center, arms go high with our inhale. Exhale, hands to the mat. Curl the back toes if they're not already. Step back, downward facing dog. We have the choice to hang here or we can flow through to our plank, down and into our cobra. Maybe we like up dog. And then we meet back in downward facing dog for just a few resting breaths. So whatever that means to you, we can take it right to child's pose and give our hands a break, or we can hold on that downward facing dog. <clears throat> Reconnect with that breath we had at the start of our practice. One last long breath here. We're gonna meet back in our down dog. Setting up the other side, lift that right leg high, look to the top of the mat and drive the right foot forward towards the top. Dropping our back foot down on its angle, we'll come all the way up for warrior one on the other side. So drop the whole of that back foot, heel is down, Pressing into the outer edge of the foot, bend into that front knee. Hands release behind us. Interlace the fingers, squeeze the shoulder blades together and press the knuckles down and away. Open up the heart center, inhale. Exhale as we hinge forward only as far down as we want to go here. Each side can be different. We might lift the arms, we might drop the head. With our next inhale, we'll come all the way back up. Exhale, release the hands. Another inhale, arms sweep high. Exhale, warrior two, right arm forward, left arm behind us. Wiggle the feet around, find our just right stance so that we can bend into that front knee. Strong back leg, active arms, taking up space, reaching through the fingertips. Pay attention to that front knee. That knee might want to dip in towards the center. Try to keep that knee pressing out towards the pinky toe. Open up the hip. Flipping our front hand over, reach out and then up, reverse it. Light touch on our back leg. Again, sending that breath to our rib cage. Gaze can be up or it can be back. 
back towards that back foot. Back to those warrior two arms, side angle, right forearm crosses our thigh, left arm reaches high. We can be here if we want extension and we've got our block or our water bottle or our board game, we can extend here. We're gonna find a hop of the back foot in tortoise. So it can kind of be a heel toe walk if we don't want it to be a hop. Bending into this front knee as much as it takes to get the fingertips either to our block or to the mat. Now take the, the hand outside the right foot. So we're on the outside of our right pinky toe. We want it to be out on an angle so we can take the block or whatever it is we're using, even if it's just our hand, a step out on an angle away from the foot. Now press through this right foot, lift the left leg, spiral the hips open so that we're trying to tuck the tailbone underneath, use our core to lift this leg. Whoop. And if we fall, it's all good. That's part of the practice. So just find our footing here again and taking our time. It's all about playing around in these poses, not about being perfect right off the bat and like, boom, I'm there. Take your time. Discovery here. Discovery. Discover something new, something that maybe we haven't thought of before. Maybe we're hunched over and our shoulders are squared and we think about spiraling our heart open to the side and even maybe reaching our hand up pressing through that heel, like we're pressing it into a wall. And then we'll take it all the way down. Take that left foot back. We're gonna find our lunge position again here. So right toes facing the top. We're on the ball of our foot in the back. Left hand is gonna anchor down, right hand reaches high, twisted. Right hand coming back to the mat. We're gonna take this into our lunge. So we might be on the ball of our foot and we stay, or we can drop the knee. So each side might be a little bit different. No obligation to do the same thing on one side that we did on the other. So finding where we are today on this side, arms sweep all the way up and back. Now an open arm twist, left arm forward, right arm sweeps back. So we're twisting open. So we're twisting towards that supportive leg. Trying to open up the chest here, open up the shoulder best we can. If it's available and it feels good, right hand can rest on the back of that left thigh. So we're keeping the twist. And this left arm reaches up and over for a little reverse-like motion here. Breathing, most importantly, through that rib cage. Unwinding back to warrior two arms, back to center, arms reach high, inhale up. Exhale, hands to the mat. If they're not already, curl the back toes, step back into down dog. Now we can stay there or we can find flow through to our plank, down and into our cobra or up dog. We all meet back in downward facing dog. Whether we choose that flow or not, we meet here. Coming forward into a plank or drop the knees for a kneeling plank. We're gonna come down to the forearms. Down to our forearms, we want the forearms here 
to be shoulder distance apart. So walk the elbows in so that they're only as wide as our shoulders. Palms face the mat. Forearms are parallel. We can be here. If it feels better to bring the hands together in a fist, we can go there. But still keep the elbows only shoulder distance apart. We're setting up dolphin. So we'll curl our toes. Lift into that forearm plank. Now lift the hips like downward facing dog and let the head go. So the head is just barely off the mat here. We can walk the feet in a step or two, descend the tailbone high and soften the heels. Great alternative to our down dog if our wrists are ever really cranky. Taking a few breaths here. Checking in with the shoulders, let them relax back and down, pressing through the elbows, through the forearms, through the fingertips, and then we'll lower the knees down to the mat. Uncurl the toes. We're going to take this into a little puppy pose. So in puppy pose, the knees and hips are stacked. Calves are parallel to each other and we walk the hands out like child's pose. Soften the chest, soften the head. Maybe the forehead kisses the mat. And we find softness in our heart space. Let it drip towards the mat. Big opening in the underarms here as we keep active arms. One more round of breath here in our puppy pose. And then we're gonna drop the forearms and slither forward onto the belly. Come all the way forward. And we're gonna press into some Sphinx pose. So in our Sphinx pose, we've got our elbows kind of shimmied up towards our shoulders and we're gonna press into the mat to lift the chest. Grounding down through our center, so like our cobra pose, press the, uh, the pelvis into the mat, tops of our feet to the mat. And if we're finding like we're not getting a lot of lift here in our sphinx pose, it may be because the elbows are <clears throat> too far back and we can't lift as much. So shimmy the elbows a little farther forward so they're right underneath the shoulders so we can ground through the elbows shine the chest forward through the gates of our arms, almost like we're pulling back to get the chest forward. Shoulders are relaxed, so we're not kind of dumping our weight here into our shoulders, kind of hanging out, really active here in this pose. Again, one more breath, big inhale, and complete exhale. Lower all the way back down. Let the hands come underneath the shoulders this time. And we'll press the chest back toward the thighs, rounding over the legs. Arms might choose to kind of swim behind us and maybe grab the feet, drip over the legs. And then we'll come all the way up. We're going to take our legs out in front of us. Now with the legs extended out in front, we're going to flex the feet. Feel again that length in the back of the legs. If our legs are still really tight, I want you to put a generous bend in the knees. So we can all start here and then work to straighten the legs. Sit up tall, shine the chest forward, inhale, arms up. Exhale and fold over the legs. Hands reach and then soften. No expectations to touch the toes. If we have that generous bend in the knees, eventually we work to straighten the legs one breath at a time. We're going to walk 
walk the hands back up our legs. And we're gonna take the right knee up and the foot can stay planted inside the thigh here. Or if we choose, we can walk it to the outside of the leg. But I want your foot to be able to plant into the mat. So if it's kind of hanging out and it can't reach the floor, then we're gonna keep it here. Left arm, wrap it around. Right hand comes up behind us. Nice and tall through the spine, reaching up with our inhale. Exhale as we twist towards that bent knee. Most importantly, we try to keep our breath as best we can. Maybe it comes a little bit more shallow in the twist, but work to deepen. Winding back to center. We're gonna lengthen out this right leg and take it to the other side. So left foot comes in, plant it either flat to the mat here or we can move it over to the outside of the thigh. Again, foot planted into the mat. So either way, right arm wraps around and we are hugging that leg in close. We might even already feel a little glute stretch there. Lifting up through the crown of our head, sit up so tall, drop the shoulders, left hand comes behind, inhale, exhale as we twist towards the left. Again, breathing best we can into this twist. Hugging the knee in close, gives us that nice glute stretch, grounding down through our sit bones as we're reaching high through the crown of our head. Trying not to collapse into that back hand. And then we'll unwind back to center. Lengthen our left leg back out. And we're gonna make sure we have mat behind us and rock it all the way back. So let's rock back and hug our knees in, let the head rest. Knees are in towards the chest. Maybe we get a little rock side to side or some knee circles in one direction and then the other. Kind of flatten out that low back. And then we're gonna take this into a little happy baby to end our practice. So bring the hands to the knees and we're gonna open the knees out towards the underarms. So we're opened out to the side we can hang here, we can grab our ankles or the bottoms of our feet if it's available, and we're gonna send the bottoms of our feet to face the ceiling. So almost like we're creating an L with the calf and the thigh, drawing the knees toward either side of us, and then actively pressing the feet up into the hands. Feel a little counteraction there little firing up of the legs as we get the pull down and the press up. We can rock side to side, true happy baby fashion here. Trying to keep our head relaxed. And then we'll help our knees back together, let it go lengthening out one leg at a time. We're gonna set up for our Shavasana, so wherever we'd like to be today, if we've taken layers off, take a moment to put those layers back on or grab a blanket and a pillow. Get comfy, we're at home, right? So we're gonna take our, or we can take our feet flat, so if our low back is kind of feeling a little cranky, this helps to flatten out the low back. Rest the knees together like tent poles. And the feet are as wide as our mat. So really, wherever we wanna be in our Shavasana, make it your own, snuggle the shoulder blades, let our eyes close, relax the jaw. Letting our breath here return back to normal. No effort.
reminding ourselves once again of our positivity, our, our anchor throughout our practice, some happy, calm, our happy place. Bring it to us here. Go there. Mine is sitting on my deck in the sun of the summer, reading a book or listening to a podcast. That is my happy place, besides being on my mat, of course. But I like to imagine that, go there, be in that space. Just kind of de-stress. Let your mind go of all the to-do list items. And take a moment to just be in your happy place, wherever that is. And as we're ready, we'll bring some movement back to our fingers and back to our toes. Shift our weight over onto our sides and come into a nice fetal position here. Stumbling the knees up close, using our arm as a pillow and really giving ourselves thanks for coming to practice, taking time out of our busy day to be here on our mats and love our bodies just the way that they are today. Be grateful for all of the hard work they do for us. And then when we're ready, we'll meet in a nice, easy seated position. Whatever that is, let it be easy, let it be gentle, take our time, hands at heart center. And then we'll inhale our arms up, going beyond ourselves. Exhale as we open ourselves up and give it all away to the world and everyone in it. And by that one simple act, we'll scoop back up the benefits, the gifts and the blessings the world has to offer us. And we'll tuck them gently into our heart and be at peace. Namaste. Thank you so much for joining me for another practice. I hope to see you all again very soon.